thing's got the juice. 35 miles an hour is the claimed top speed on this dual motor fat tire electric bike. Whoa, <laughs> holy crap. Dude. And they say we can get 60 miles of range from the 48 volt, 22 amp hour battery pack. And we should be getting a peak power of 2000 watts across the two motors. But do not buy the Boom Bike Zieger S1 just yet. We need to crack this thing open and see what it's made of. <laughs> We're gonna start this review off with a boom. Check it out, dude. This bike has yellow wheels. The hub motor on the front wheel is indeed stamped as 1,000 watts. Let's look at them brake rotors. 160 millimeter rotor. But dude, you gotta see, gotta see this color. I gotta say, man, I'm a fan. Of course, we get the same exact 1,000 watt hub motor in the rear. We'll fire that up in just a moment. Comes with the rear rack, and the brakes are hydraulic, courtesy of DY Island. Budget brakes on 160 millimeter rotor on the rear. This is a full suspension e-bike with a four link rear suspension. It's running a basic air shock. We'll feel it out here in just a few, but here is the controller box. Perhaps we'll pop that open here in a little bit and see what's in there. So that controller will pull its power from the battery, which will mount here, and send it to the two motors. Hmm, it actually looks like there's a controller mounted here built into the battery tray. This one is showing 21 amps. And skimming the website, it's not entirely clear to me whether this is a dual controller bike or a single controller bike. Looking at the power claims of this bike, I think that this is a dual controller setup. Probably 40 amps total. However, there is gonna be a bottleneck in this power somewhere. It's saying we can run 1,000 watts on the rear, 1,000 on the front. So however much power can be pulled from those dual controllers, seems like it's gonna be limited by whatever's inside this hidden package. That's right, the battery. Here's what it looks like. It is rated to discharge at up to 50 amps, and it is running on 48 volts, and it is indeed a 22.8 amp hour battery pack. Alexa was 48 times 22.4, so 1,075 watt hours of energy. So if this dual controller setup is actually capable of pulling 2,000 watts, that might drain the battery pretty quickly. We'll find out. I said the maximum charge rate of that battery is five amps. What kind of charger do they give us? Feels like a three amp. <laughs> yes, it's a three amp. I guess these days I can just pick up a charger and tell how many amps it is. So 22.4 divided by three. So about seven and a half hours to charge this thing from completely empty to completely full. Fortunately, they do not ship it completely empty. It looks like it's about 70%, 60%, somewhere in there. So we'll top that off while we build it. It's also got user manuals, a guarantee card information, tools, pedals. Looks like a phone holder with a connection to the bike battery so you can uh, charge your phone directly from here. Sweet. The seat they give us is wide and has a little cutout in the middle. There is a quick release lever for easy adjustments. Seat post diameter on this is 30.4 millimeters if you wanna swap it. It's got lightweight plastic fenders. Zier bike. And by now you've probably noticed the dual crown fork up front. It's got gold stanchions, which I think flows pretty well with the yellow. And it's got a typical preload adjustment as well as a compression adjustment. Handlebars, aim, fire. They're relatively flat. They've got a key in there. A little bit of rise. Round rubber grips and a red button here for single or dual motor. Horn, light, pedal assist. Budget friendly DY Island hydraulic levers. And on the right side, we can control our power with a quarter twist throttle. And if we wanna use our legs, we can send our own power through a seven speed Shimano shifter. Retail price is available in the link below this video. And I gotta say, dude, we're a little bit matchy matchy here. Drop some metal shavings down there. <laughs> It's always a little bit more difficult to put the front wheel on when you got a motor. And you'll probably never see a quick release on a bike that has a front motor because you really gotta bolt these things down, make sure they don't rotate on you with all that torque. And here's how you connect that front motor. And the zip ties they give you aren't quite long enough to reach, dude. Don't worry, your boy's got some laying around here. That'll do it. Here's what it looks like when you put the fender on. Here's the headlight. We'll power that display up in a minute after we throw the pedals on, which I am noticing get kind of close to this front fender. We'll see if we have any clearance issues on the ride. The rear rack will add a little bit of weight and you get a reflector on back. Looks like some sort of battery operated light. My weight is 200 pounds. When I pick the bike up, the scale says 273. So the bike without the battery weighs 73 pounds. The battery weighs 10 pounds. So we have an 83 pound bike. But that's before we fill the Chow Yang tires up to the recommended PSI of 20. <laughs> Which, how much weight does that add? Okay, I'll stop the dad jokes. Chain ring on the front looks fairly large for some good high-speed pedaling, and there are seven gears on the rear cassette. They do give you a derailleur guard
guard installed in case you knock the bike over. It'll protect your tourney derailleur. So part of me wants to open up that box and see that controller, but the other part of me just wants to get this battery on there. See what this thing is all about. So let's power this thing up. Power button's down there, and we've seen this display before is color. So we get our battery readout up here in terms of bars, and it can, oh, that turns on the light. And we can tap through the options here and see we have odometer, max speed, average speed, and trip. This button will toggle between single and dual motor. There is no indicator on the screen, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to feel it. Wonder what the horn sounds like. Horn is built into the light. Beep, beep. I'd say bicycle friendly, and now we can turn on the light, which here's what it looks like. You can adjust the angle just like this, and it's uh, fairly bright. The light on the rear is not integrated into the battery, but there's a button down here, and you can kind of tab between uh, some different modes here. Oh, we can be a police officer. How about that? <laughs> looks like they give you a little charging cable here for it. For your reference, here's what a six foot five dude with a 34 inseam looks like getting on this bike. Here's what my pedal stroke would look like. Puts me in a position to where I can put down some power of my own if I'd like to. And I can still touch the ground. Dropping the seat down to minimum height. This puts me in a more relaxed position. And here's what my pedal stroke would look like. Suspension feels like we're falling on a budget. It's really not bad because of the four link setup. You could swap that shock out if you want. Rear suspension is always very much appreciated, even if it's not top of the line. Of course we get five levels of pedal assist, so let's uh, try it out. So let's try rear motor pedal assist five. Ready, go. Up to 31.1 where it cuts us off, but check this out. So it looks like you either run dual motor or rear motor. So let's see if I can actually do this. Dual motor, ready, go. Oh yeah, dude, we got the juice. <laughs> looks like a juice joyride. Whoa. Yeah, dude. This thing's got the juice. That's pretty snappy. All right, dudes, let's take the boom bike, Zigger S1 out for a ride. Of course, we'll start up the Strava. We'll bring the manual along in case we need to tinker with the settings. Of course, we're on a full charge on this dual motor electric bike. And one thing that's nice about this bike, it comes with a built-in phone holder here that is actually wired into the bike with a USB charging port on the bottom. So if you need to charge your bike, you can. So let's fire this thing up and get on out for a ride. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this thing holding my phone today. We'll see how it pans out. Of course, the very first test we're gonna do is the 20% grade. We're gonna put this thing on pedal assist five and put it on single motor for starters. So let's go ahead, just one motor, see how this thing does on pedal assist five, no pedaling. I weigh 200 pounds and it's actually almost doing it on single motor on throttle only. We'll go ahead and bail and pop on back down here at the bottom again, bump it into dual motor and now let's try it. Pedal assist five, throttle only, no rollout. Oh, we're picking up power, dude. All right, so we're hitting about 10 miles an hour. And as we can see, this is gonna be a strong hill climber, typical of most dual motor electric bikes. Whoa, <laughs> holy crap, dude. Couple of first observations out here. This screen is relatively dim. I'm having a little bit of difficulty seeing it in the California bright light here. Can you see it through the polarized lenses? I've seen this display before, but I forget. Oh yeah, you can see it, but it's definitely like way not, it's like, it's, it's kind of hard to see. Fortunately with the built-in phone holder here, we'll be able to have a uh, readout on the GPS the whole day, unless we drop our phone that is. So let's go ahead and try the power modes now, bumping it on down. Do pedal is this year, obviously nothing when you're pedaling it and the throttle also does nothing on pedal assist zero. It would be really cool if it gave us like a readout for the power that this bike is outputting. Unfortunately, that is not the case, but uh, on pedal assist one here, let's give it throttle. Oh yeah, you get like, I am pretty sure that is like all the power up until 12 miles an hour. So it is a cadence sensor. Let's start out here on pedal assist one and Oh yeah, dude, you can feel this thing's got good power. Let's put it on pedal assist too, see what that does. So it's a cadence sensor. It doesn't matter how hard you're pressing on the pedals. I'm ghost pedaling right now and it's holding us at 16. And at about 16, 15 miles an hour, this is like a comfortable cadence. Let's try pedal assist three. Boom, it hits you with that power again. Uh, it's got a pretty good kick to it. And now we're cruising at 21 miles an hour. Make that 22, let's try pedal assist three here. Boom, it's picking up speed again. So pedal assist four will take us up to, I am pretty much ghost pedaling now at 25 
five miles an hour. I mean, I can put down a little pedal, a little pedal power, but uh, pedal assist five is, or pedal assist four is taking us to 25. Brakes, I can tell, definitely need some bedding in. They're not grabbing super hard out of the box. That's pretty typical. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so riding position on this bike, I am noticing puts me a little bit up on the handlebars. It's kind of like a mountain bike riding position. Also helps you distribute your weight a little bit up on your arms to utilize that dual crown front suspension as well as the air shock on the on the rear. So suspension on this bike, you know, is relatively nice riding. Not, you know, the most plunged full suspension I've ever tried, but certainly way better than, you know, there was no rear suspension. So I'll go ahead and bump that on pedal assist five now and twist on that throttle. We're on dual motor. This should be full power. Going into a bit of a headwind and it feels like the power just cut me off at a pretty hard limit right around. 32 miles an hour into headwind. We'll see if we can do better on a tailwind here in a little bit. Speedometer on board is actually reading a little bit low, saying 31.1, where it shows 32 up here. I wonder if we could modify the wheel diameter and trick this thing into thinking we're going slower and actually hit a higher speed. So let's go ahead and give it a zero to 20 acceleration. I weigh 200 pounds and that forward seating position will actually help you get some more power down to that front wheel. So a lot of times these dual motor bikes, they'll kind of spin out the front motor. Let's go ahead and lean forward, give it a go, and go. <laughs> so it kind of, you gotta like, it doesn't give you all the power right away, but now it will. So ready, go. Oh yeah, there we go. So 15, 20, 25. This thing's fast, dude. And as you'll see, the GPS will lag a little bit, but the onboard is reading a correct speedo speedometer. Let's go ahead and run that one more time here. Ready, stop, and ready, go. Oh, come on now. <laughs> 10, 15, 20. So pretty quick accelerating bike. <laughs> bike, it's a bicycle, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and just out of curiosity, what if we bump it down to single motor here? Come to stop and now full power. So considerably less power. Now this might not burn through the battery quite as quick. This is only what a 22, 22.5 amp hour battery pack. So if you are running this thing on dual motor, ripping it like I was just doing there, you might not make it very far. We'll see what the range is today though. So on a long straight with a bit of a tailwind, let's see what we can hit for top speed. Ready, go full throttle. So it eases on that power in the very beginning and 15, 25, 31, and the speedometer here tops out at 31, but GPS says we're going 32. And it feels like, I don't know, like it, it feels like it still has like good power, but like it's just limiting us somehow. <laughs> hey buddy. <laughs> I do feel like this thing could go faster at 32 though, really. But 32 is what it's given us. Oh yes, uh, page 11 here, speed limit setting. So out of the box is set to 63 miles an hour and that is actually the maximum. I guess you could go into the wheel diameter settings to set as 29s out of the box. This will make your speedometer read incorrectly, but um, maybe we could reach a higher speed on GPS. We'll set them as 20 inches. So now cruising at 16 on the GPS as we're going 11 on the onboard. Computer is full. Do not do this. Do, I do not recommend this, but uh, full throttle. Let's go now. See what it does. So 15 here, 18 there, 21. GPS says 25. GPS says 31, 32. Watch out BMW, bro. 33 now. Uh, 24 on here and 33 on the GPS. 34 on the GPS now. And as you can see, we're whipping by uh, these bikes. <laughs> that dude whipped around like, what the heck? So 34, maybe we can hit 35 with a little bit of tuck. Come on, dude, let's do it. I guess 33, 34 is gonna be about the top on a 48 volt system. Pretty legit though, dude. But really a bike like this isn't so much about high speed as it's gonna be about like high torque and off-roading with these dual motors. So we'll get it out there in just a few. And the way this bike is geared, you really, you can't really help it to pedal after you're going about 25. There's really no way you're gonna like uh, be pedaling to help this thing go beyond 33, 34 miles an hour realistically. So we'll try it on the flat sand here in just a few, but first let's try some crazy stuff here. Look at this super steep hill right here. Can we? Oh my goodness. Yes, we can. <laughs> this thing, oh my goodness, dude. This thing has, oh wow. This thing has a lot of torque, dude. And uh, if you're looking for something to do like some sand riding, this could be a good option for you. <laughs> so let's go see how it'll do out on the flat sand. But first, let's take it on down these stairs. This is a full suspension electric bike. Oh yeah, I can do it. And going into the sand here from no, no. So I made the mistake of having this on single motor when I was riding it through the sand. It really didn't do too terrible, but I, I knew something was up here. As you can see here, I was pretty much making it through the sand like a typical 26 inch by four inch 
fat tire e-bike until dude i'm a freaking idiot i was riding that thing on single motor so i just realized that was all on single motor um, let's try this thing on dual motor now oh yeah dude i can tell a huge difference now i can't oh yeah man 16 miles an hour i'm i'm really not even like goosing it all the way here let's get it out here in the the loose sand and oh my goodness dude yeah this thing's got all the juice all the juice you can really want now the suspension isn't the most plush full suspension i've ever tried but my goodness dude we're doing 18 miles an hour on the sand uh slow it down <laughs> oh man dude this bike's a lot of fun i wonder how long the battery is gonna last though because like 22 amp hours 48 volt system running I mean, a thousand watt motor in the front, thousand watt motor in the rear. I just, I don't know how long I can run power like this, but holy crap, dude, this thing has the juice, man. All right, you can come to like a, like a really slow speed here and then just goose it and it's peeling out just a little bit here, picking up speed, rapido. <laughs> This thing rips, dude. So of course, since it is a dual motor electric bike, that uh, that ripping, uh, it, that torque and everything is gonna come at the sacrifice of extra rotational mass on that front wheel. So it's, uh, oh yeah, dude. These dual motor 26 inch fat tired e-bikes are always gonna be a little bit more lethargic in the handling department. But uh, this one, like I mentioned before, puts you a little bit more up on the handlebars. So like, uh, by being more on, on the handlebars here, you have a little bit better control over your steering than something that's a little bit more upright and relaxed. And holy crap, dude, it's uh, under voltage sag right now showing two bars, two out of five bars. <laughs> so we're probably down to about 50% battery after like seven miles or so. Actually, we are 8.75 miles is showing two bars <laughs> definitely having a little bit of range anxiety i'm going to switch this thing over to single motor for a little bit to save on battery actually let's crank this thing back on to dual motor up the process five and try the tough hill full throttle oh i should bump down a few gears see if we can make it up this uh, oh yeah buddy oh, i just barely put my foot down at the very end there yeah dude this thing's got the door for climbing and uh yep we're on two bars still so let's see Ooh. So let's go try out the California Incline and then see if we can actually make it home today. For those of you new here, the California Incline is the top of that hill. There's a ramp that has a 12% grade that'll take us up 85 feet. So we'll flip it back on the dual motors and see what kind of speed we can hit. So let's see what it's got left in it. Full throttle. And yeah, a lot of torque. You can definitely feel like the, the handling compared to a non-dual motor electric bike going around a turn like that. But still ripping it up. I could use the horn right now, but I don't want to do that. So at the base of the California Incline. Full throttle. Still spinning that front wheel just a little bit, trying to keep my weight down on there to keep it going. 11 miles an hour, 16. Burning through that battery, baby. 19, 20, 22. About to go blowing past the acoustic bike on the outside here. 23 miles an hour, 24 miles an hour, and topping out about 25. We'll tap on the brakes. Speaking of brakes, let's whip this thing around, see what kind of high speed we can hit running down the California incline and then how good the brakes are. So already at 28 into a slight headwind, pretty steep downhill, 12%, 33 miles an hour. Yeah, even on a downhill, man, cutting this off about 33. And this has DY Island hydraulic disc brakes of 160 millimeters. And you know, they bring it to a stop, not quite as powerful as like a 180 millimeter rotor. Uh, DY Island brakes are all right. They don't feel quite as great as, you know, some more name brand stuff, but you know, they get the job done. In case you're wondering what it looks like when you slam on the brakes from about 20 miles an hour, here you have it. <laughs> so, brake levers are fine, again, you know, not the most powerful brakes I've ever tried. Dude, I really just cannot resist myself when I see the sand. I just gotta get up. Oh, I almost lost it. <laughs> you can't go into a turn like that. Oh, dude, this thing just rips, man. I'm gonna end up getting myself stranded out here, running out of battery. Oh yeah, this thing has cruise control too. You just hold that plus button for like two seconds and, uh, Get a little better energy efficiency just by cruising if you want. So final thoughts on the Boom Bike Zieger S1 dual motor. I mean, this bike is a beast of a bike. Um, 
Range will maybe be a concern for you. It really just depends on how hard you're pushing that power. This thing's really capable of drawing a lot of power and the battery isn't the largest. Overall, it is not a bad bike at all. This is single motor right now. So if you are looking for a dual motor high power bike, uh, this could be an option for you. If you do want to grab one that is on sale right now in the link below this video in the description box, you can get at least a few hundred bucks off down there. And if you did buy through that link, it would help support my reviews here on Tell Heavy TV. But before you buy it, let's head on home and see if, well, see if we can make it home and see what the final range is on this thing. See what kind of juice it's got left right here. Full throttle, let's go. Yeah, it's pulling us up the hill. We got this. <laughs> Hey, here goes our tracks from earlier. Let's go back over these. All right, dudes, just rolling up to the neighborhood here on 20.6 miles, hour and 40 minutes of ride time today. And we are showing officially one bar remaining on the battery. So on the way home, I did flip it over to single motor. The first half of this ride I did on dual motor and I was ripping pretty freaking good. A 48 volt, 22 amp hour battery pack is not small by any means, but when you are ripping dual 1000 watt motors, you can just drain that battery basically twice as fast. Now, of course you don't have to do that. You could certainly be a lot more efficient with your power use than I was today. I really did not pedal this bike like at all, pretty much just ripping it, pedal assist five, dual motor. And as you can see, we were out there riding on the sand for quite a bit as well. So, you know, if I keep it in single motor, I could probably get maybe another five miles out of this bike. So I think that is a realistic range expectation. You can see out of this bike, you're ripping it the way I was today. If this is the electric bike you wanna buy, buy it through the link below this video in the description box. That'll give you the best price on it. And it also helps support my reviews here on Tail Heavy TV. However, if this is not the kind of electric bike you're looking for, watch this video next, catch you over there.